Hey folks, welcome back. Just a quick video here on the Mighty Mule gate opener. I don't know how many of you are using these, but in our environment in the Pacific Northwest where we get a lot of cold and wet, these things sometimes fail. This one was beeping. Usually what you need to do is take this off, bring it in the workshop, take it apart and dry it out. And I'll show that procedure. So disconnecting this is pretty easy. This is the power. It's got a fuse there. You can just disconnect the power. This is the receiver for a wireless or a keypad. We've got a green, black, and red. They're labeled right here on the circuit board, so you don't have to worry about forgetting which one's which. And a little jeweler's screwdriver, a little, you know, this is a 332nd screwdriver. Fits those screws pretty well. So we take that off, disconnect that for now. Now we'll bring this back to the shop, clean it up and dry it out and we'll get down in here which is where I think the real problem is. <laughs> So you can see there's quite a bit of water in this housing. I don't know if that's from condensation or if it's dripping inside, but the first thing I notice is this micro switch is tweaked. Uh, the little arm on it is bent. And there's some grease on it. Usually the problem in the past has been this photo sensor. That's a little IR emitter and detector, and it shoots a beam through these little gaps on this disc and acts as an encoder. So it tells the controller how many pulses it sees, and uh, that defines how much the arm has retracted or extended. In this arm, that defines the closed position limit. The open position limit is defined by that, just that little limit switch. When the arm comes back, it hits that little switch. But the closed position, if you're using a push to close, uh, is defined by that encoder. But yeah, you can see a lot of water in this housing, and that's never good for the electronics. This is a little gasket that rides on the shaft, and uh, it's either not doing its job or the um, condensation is, is an issue. But I'm going to need to fix this little limit switch, and we'll see if I can take this arm off this little lever and bend it back into place and reuse that switch, or if I'll need to solder in a new switch. So to do either, I need to take this circuit board out and take a look at it. While I have it out, I'll make sure that the IR sensor and emitter are dry. I'll just give it a little dusting with dry air. You don't want to use air from your shop air compressor if you don't have a dryer on it. You want to use something that's uh, really dry air. You don't want to be injecting high pressure water and air into it and then just kind of spraying this stuff. You've got to be mindful of condensation when you use the canned air because it can be cold. But we'll dry out the rest of this housing and make sure there's no water in here because what I've decided to do is try to seal up this housing as best I can uh, with some silicone or some sort of gasket sealer and see if we have any water problems uh, going forward. While we're at it, I'll also spray some air in the switch. Just try to get any condensation out of there if it has any. Now, while I have it apart, I want to see if this motor has any markings on it. It looks like a Type 775 hobby motor, but I'm wondering if it has any RPM uh, markings on it or part numbers or anything, because this gate doesn't open and close as fast as I would like it to. I'd like to upgrade to a motor with higher RPMs. Unfortunately, this, this motor doesn't have any markings on it, and I would have to open the gearbox to unmount the motor, and I'm just not in the mood to do that today. So I think that uh, replacing that motor, will that project will have to wait for a different day. 
So I'm just going to take a pair of needle nose pliers and bend this little micro switch lever back into place. And uh, sorry I didn't get it on camera there, but put it back in the micro switch and sure enough it's working just fine. I cleaned the grease off of it. I think the issue might be that in the winter time the grease is stiff. And if there's that stiff grease or any frost on the Acme screw when the shaft is retracting, uh, it might be hitting that micro switch and tweaking it. And once that micro switch errors out, if it doesn't sense that the shaft has retracted and the circuitry uh, hits its amp overload, there is an adjustable overload on the circuit board on this, um, a stall rating. Um, once it hits it once, it will error out and just beep at you until you reset something. Um, so in this case, uh, I think the switch just wasn't working at all. I didn't test that before I took it apart, but I'm feeling like uh, this switch, fixing that switch, might be the fix for this one this time. So I'm going to add a little gasket here because the gasket that comes with the Mighty Mule just seems inadequate uh, to really seal against much. So I just happen to have some of this EPDM rubber weather seal in my shop. So I'm going to cut a little piece of that. It's got four little ridges on it. We'll stuff it in there and see if it helps at all. Uh, in hindsight, I should have put this in the other side of the housing because this is actually ends up being the top of the housing once it gets installed on the gate. But uh, next time, hopefully uh, I don't have to take this apart, but if I do, the next time I have this apart, I will switch that around and make the seam of this little gasket on the top, not the bottom. You'll notice that this plastic housing doesn't have any sort of gasket. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to put a little bit of silicone on this aluminum part. This did have a gasket, but it's long since deteriorated. So I'm going to put a bead of silicone on the aluminum and on the whole uh, interface where the clamshell of the plastic comes together. And then uh, we're just going to try to keep some of the water out. I think that here in the Pacific Northwest, we have such a high relative humidity that uh, moist air gets inside there. And then in the wintertime, it gets cold and it turns to frost on the metal parts and then it gets warm again and it and that uh, frost melts and I end up with water inside my gate opener so hopefully this will seal up the unit and uh, keep some of that moist air out of there and keep condensation out of there so I don't have any future errors with this opener it's always a good idea to keep track of which wires are which this first connector is a unique connector for this circuit board but the next four are spade connectors and uh, so keep track of it whatever way is good for you in the old days I would write everything down nowadays I normally take pictures with my phone those first two spade connectors go to the switch these second two up top will go to the motor and I'm tightening this screw with a hand screwdriver uh, that's because it goes through a circuit board I tend to tighten all the ones that go through circuit boards with a screwdriver because I'm less likely to crack the circuit board or to strip out the plastic post that the screw goes into if I'm doing it by hand. I love my electric screwdrivers, but there is a time when a manual screwdriver is a better tool to use. So now it's just a matter of hooking the gate opener back up, um, hooking up the remote here, and then I'll hook up the power, and then I'll put the cover back on. I will end up sealing this cover with a little bit of aluminum tape. I was trying to think what would be the best style tape that would be UV resistant and weather resistant, but uh, not as permanent or as messy as silicone and so I settled on aluminum tape and so now for the moment of truth we'll see if it runs and it does we'll cycle it back and forth a couple of times just to make sure it's working with both the hard limit switch and the soft limit encoder switch and now I'll just put a little bit of aluminum tape on there this is actual aluminum foil tape with silicone adhesive on the back. I like it because the aluminum is UV resistant, of course, and the tape doesn't degrade and the adhesive on it is works pretty well. It's pretty waterproof. And so I'm just sealing up this bottom unit. That means that I'll be able to peel the tape and take that cover off if I need to, but in the meantime, it's pretty darn waterproof. And so far it's been working a few months now in the cold and wet and it's worked just fine. Hey folks, just a little follow up. I actually filmed the beginning of this video about two and a half months ago, and I'm just getting around now to editing it. The gate opener has been working fine since, uh, since I fixed that little switch inside and sealed it up. And so far I haven't seen any trouble with water or condensation, anything. 
uh, affecting it. So the tape is working fine. The silicone's working fine. I did want to mention that when you install these, I found it helps a lot if you have the pivot a little bit higher than the end of the arm. That way the whole arm is pitched down. So whenever you get rain on the arm, whenever you get frost or snow or anything, when it melts, it doesn't drip into the arm, it drips out. And I think that's an important thing. Anyway, this thing's fixed for now. I hope you like the video. If you do like these videos, please like and subscribe. And uh, as usual, turn on notifications. All right, thanks very much, bye.